Before we begin, I wanted to show you guys this right here. Look at this. Someone hit, uh, hit me up in my Discord. His name's E1. Really funny. He was like, why is this hard? Or why is this so hard? It's like, what, dude, why is level 2 so hard? And he was in stage 2 for an hour and a half. I think he was joking. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm like almost certain that he was joking. But I just thought it was funny. Thought I wanted to share it. And there it is. Here we are on day 7 of our free-to-play journey. And so far, we've collected our ancient shard. I did pull some shards. Let me click this right here. All the pop-ups. I did pull some shards on a discussion video with Beanie. And I didn't get anything notable. But we did pull Prundar, who, in my opinion, is going to be food. He's got decreased speed and stun on the A1. But... I mean, he's got Provoke and some healing and strengthen. And then he's got his chance to counterattack. However, he does require a lot of books. And I don't really see him having too much play for me yet. I mean, I'm going to hold on to him a little bit longer just to see if a free-to-play user would be able to use him. The issue that I'm running into with, with a, I guess, the, the five-year knowledge mindset that i have is it's kind of hard for me to reframe sometimes the way that i think with what i know with the way that things will actually be for most people who are playing for an example i have more than half a mind to turn him into food but if i was a newer player i don't think that's what i would do i think i would i would have thought oh he might be good i'm gonna build him out i'm gonna try it he's my first epic He's my first epic void. But for me, on my endgame account at least, he's pretty much food for me. And I'm looking at his skills right now, I mean, provoke on a three turn cooldown, increase defense on this champion. It's not a bad skill to have, but it requires like eight books just right here. Another eight right here, that's 16, 17 books. Another. 18, 19, 20, 21, 20, 22 books for him to be fully effective. It, it's asking for a lot, and I don't feel like it's giving much in return. Yes, he's got strength in and continuous heal, but it's on a four-turn cooldown. I don't know. I don't think so. I, the more I say it as I'm reading this, I feel that he's not great, and I think he should be food. That's just my take on it. That's the only thing notable, because he is an epic champion. Other things to note, I got these fusion champions. Wanderer. I pulled Soulbound. Let me put Wanderer away also. These fusion champions, I just put right here. I put them in my, my vault so that when it's time to fuse Roz and Scarhide, Scarhide for the mission, for the fusion mission, then we can do that. Aether is another one that I pulled. He's food. Provoke on the A1. Provoke on the A2, attacking twice randomly, counterattack. Only available when Kali is on the team, but he's immune to stun, freeze, and sleep. But again, where are you going to really use that? That's a very niche thing, very specific thing to have. Only when Kali is available, and Kali is another trap champion, in my opinion. Somebody I built out to 60, and then quickly realized, I don't really need her. Other than that, we did pull another Aethel. We got Soulbound Boyer, who is a pretty good champion. For Faction Wars specifically, her A1 her A is an AoE, so you put her in a stun set. Great for crowd control, excellent champion. I'm going to keep her. We did pull Aethel. Aethel is actually... Beanie and I were talking about this, and Aethel said... Or Beanie was saying that Aethel was actually pretty good, that he was able to clear hard... All of hard. Three star of the entirety of hard using Aethel. I think that was pretty nice. Big rip to Madman for Hydra. Other than that, those are my pulls. This is day seven, so we did collect Rathalos Blade Master. Now, what are my opinions of him as a newer player? I think that he's an excellent, crazy, bonkers champion who can provide a lot of damage, especially in clan boss. 
irresistible decreased defense. A1 and every second use in a round becomes an AoE. Ignores 25% of the target's defense unless it's a boss. It's 100%. It's a lot of damage. Great for the dungeons as well. AoE on the A3 and before attacking, which is nice because I like being self-buffed before attacking. Increased crit damage, increased speed. Two turns. That's a lot of damage. Inflicts more damage when targets are an HP burn. Receives less damage when there is an HP burn. Every fifth skill used by this champion is going to deal more damage. 200% more damage. That's a lot. The issue that I'm having is I will only pretty much be using him in the dungeons and in clan boss. Well, now that I'm saying it out loud, that's pretty much everywhere, right? Dungeons, clan boss, Hydra. I'll use him in Hydra. Arena, maybe. That's pretty much the whole game. What am I saying? Well, I guess belay my last on that, and I want to talk about how I won't be able to, because I'm looking at my gear. I'm not going to be able to build him the way that I want to build him, the way in which I think he might benefit the most. Savage, all I have is this. I'm not going to be able to do the higher stages of Fire Knight quite yet to get the good gear. I want to put him in Savage. I haven't seen other builds, other videos yet from other content creators who are using Rathalos quite yet as a free-to-play newer player. I could be wrong. I might be wrong. All I can think of is with my end game mind frame, frame of mind, I want to put him in lethal or savage and cruel. And I want to throw him into Hydra to see how, 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 how much damage he can do. But I don't have access to that. Plus, he takes a lot of books. This is a lot of books. Five, one, two, three, four, I mean. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right now, where I'm at, where I'm unable to get a lot of legendary... Look, I have no, none, nada. There are no legendary books on this account. Granted, it's only a weekend. But because I'm not doing clan boss... I don't have a steady stream of Lego books coming in. Because of that, I will not be able to use him to his full potential. I will not be able to put the best gear on him quite yet. That could be said about every other champion that I have. But I do feel as if Sun Wukong can provide a lot more benefit to this account currently. I've made like four or five different videos on him already. I think he's a really, really great champion. But Rathalos, he's going to have to wait for me to, to rank him up. I just don't feel like I can fully take everything that I can out of Rathalos versus Sun Wukong. But I still think Rathalos is an insane champion. If you have it available, the, the gear and everything. Obviously, he's going to be highly rated in all the dungeons everywhere. But again, if I have to decide between Rathalos and Sun Wukong, I, I'm leaning more towards Sun Wukong. Maybe it's because I haven't even played with Rathalos yet. I don't know. My opinion could change. And that is part of this game completely, right? You might think one thing and then you might be surprised. Or you might one thing, you might think one thing and learn the exact opposite or have a, a change of heart later on. At least that's what I felt growing up in raid so i'll put some gear on him i'll try to gear him out and, and see how he perform in fact i could do that right now let me do that let's go ahead and um let me close up my other accounts because i have other accounts running up right now trying to get chronum so let's see here hell hades optimizer I'm going to pull this up, and we will see what's the quote-unquote best gear I can currently get on him. This, this is how you use it. You click whatever, whatever optimizer. I have a, a 
4090. So we're going to use the GPU optimizer balanced configure. We're going to allow everything to be observed. My priority stats are going to be attack. Speed is not going to be the highest priority quite yet. Crit rate, we want 100. I don't want to go too far over. I'm going to say 105 is sort of the max that I'm willing to have my gear stretch over 100. I would like it if it was exactly at 100, but sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you have to go over to make whatever gear sets you want work work. We're going to prioritize crit damage. Checking one more time. I don't think we need accuracy for anything. Nope, because this is irresistible. We don't need accuracy. I'm not too worried about resistance. HP will be something we work on later. Speed we don't really care about. Ideally, we would want to have him in Savage for the extra ignore. But we're just going to see what pops up currently. Because sometimes that's just how it is. When you're a newer player, early game, you work with what you've got. 12k HP. And again, he's not maxed out yet. I will max him out soon. 155 speed. That's not bad. Crit rate, 100. Okay. Crit damage is only at 81. Attack is only at 112, 78. And we're taking gear off my main two champions that I'm currently using. And this is gear that's not even ranked up all the way. So, I'll have to test them out. Let you guys know. I will be building and making a video on him soon on my main account. Where I do have all this gear ready to go. But we'll see. Jamars has actually been pretty clutch for me. I haven't worked too hard on her quite yet. But I was struggling on stage. On normal stage. What was it? 10. I was struggling for on 10. And actually 11 was really easy. Just because Sun Wukong is positive affinity. But this stage, with all these magic champions, he wasn't able to do it by himself. Luckily, I had Jamarsa. I did have to manual. But her revives came in clutch. And her heals came in clutch. I talk about the revives here because Sun Wukong, I didn't have him ascended yet. And when he's not fully ascended, or not. When he isn't at a 3-star ascension, he doesn't have his revive available to him. Now I don't have to worry about it. But Jamarsa came in clutch as a reviver there. As well as a healer, specifically in this fight, because this dragon was hitting quite hard. I do need to work on her as well. But I am getting kind of sidetracked so much in this game currently, because I have been pulling certain champions. I was focusing on Kale, so I was putting energy and masteries into him. There's nothing wrong with it. I think Kale is going to be a great champion. We're going to bring him up to probably 50, and then we'll reevaluate later when I kind of see who I have. I don't know that I want to bring him to 60 quite yet, even though he is a great champion for clan boss. Again, if you're a newer player, yes, 60 Kale. You could use them both as a campaign farmer, although it's like 35 to 40 seconds. Clan boss, he's got the poisons. Great champion. But then I pulled Saurus. Saurus hits with AoEs on both of his skills. Now I'm working on building Saurus up, putting my better gear on him because I want him to be my campaign farmer. On some of the last free-to-play accounts that I've had, he has been my campaign farmer. On accounts that don't have somebody like Skullcrown or Bellower, Saurus is a farmable champion that you can get from stage 10, right here. And he will clear 12-3 for you in 6 seconds. An uncommon 6-second farmer. And at the same time, I was also trying to build out some Wukong. So that's another thing. Because Sun Wukong has just been generally useful everywhere, especially in Arena. Especially with his 28% boost to speed in Arena. But I won't be able to max him out quite yet, and he's been clutch for clearing some of the campaigns as well. I am excited to use Rathalos, don't get me wrong. 
I'm not trying to diminish his value. I think he's an excellent he's an excellent champion. A lot of damage coming out of him. We're going to be using him soon. In terms of missions, we have to ascend a champion to level 5. And actually, I think it might have to be Kale. Unless, can I Rathalos? No, not yet. Let's go ahead and rank up Rathalos. Now, I do want to caution you against doing this. Using epics to rank up a champion, using epics at food, as food, I, I do have to warn you, sometimes you don't want to do this more often than not, you're going to want to keep at least one copy in your vault here because you never know if they might buff this champion, if there is a faction where you might benefit from having these champions because it's better than having nobody, or maybe in Centranos eventually. You never know. Although I do want to prioritize getting through the main missions, one, because I'm going to give away the account, this account, when I do get to Arbiter and start doing UNM. And two, I am a to-do list guy. It becomes more of a prerogative, subjective thing. Whenever I see a list of things to do, that's what I need to do. That's just my personality. That's just what I go off of. That's also why I'm really big on, the, on these checklists and the challenges. This is what I'm following. You do not need to follow the main missions. You do not need to go along with the challenges. You could basically go throughout the entire game of Raid, focus only on Clan Boss if you want to, because Clan Boss offers excellent rewards, more notably, more shards and books. Many people might argue that because I haven't been prioritizing Clan Boss, that I'm in the wrong. And you wouldn't be wrong to assume that. But because I am the way that I am, and I kind of wanted to do something different because in the past, all I've done was focus on clan the campaign farmer and clan boss. That's what I've done first. But now I'm trying things a little bit differently. I want to focus and gun down the missions as quickly as possible. Same thing with the challenges. But that's where that just becomes a, a thing about me. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Upgrade a champion to rank 5. By the way, that's in the challenges. This was brought up to my attention by um, Hold on, sorry. Let me move this over here. I'm trying to see if I can find his exact comment. Well, I can't I can't find it in, in the Discord, but Virg actually no, it was in a discussion. It was in a discussion. It was in a discussion. Virgi, one of the newer content creators that kind of joined our little circle here. Go ahead and uh, check out some of the other videos. Videos find his link. I think my last one. He talked about some of, and we're gonna do a video on this later, a collab video talking about every mission that you need to prepare for or be aware of so that you don't make the same mistakes that many people do. This this right here, upgrade four champions to level 50. I'm about to ascend Kale, bring him to 50. A lot of people want to gun, jump the gun, rank up to six. Their, their first rank six champion. But Vergi told me that if you do that, this is not retroactive. This mission right here to upgrade four champions to level 50, if it's four out of four right now, it will drop down to back to three out of four. So be cognizant of that. Prepare for that. Be aware of it. And then fuse just this CR. So if you see a fusion symbol, go ahead and make sure you don't immediately just feed them or use them as food. At least have a copy and start preparing them for this. I need to start preparing my champions for fusing just this year. Who will eventually fuse into Relic Keeper. I have Eris. I've got Spirit Host ready to go. I gotta pull or farm for Diablist from the Brimstone Path. As well as War Maiden in the Denlands. By the way, there was another discussion that I had with, I think it was Beanie. 
it was Beanie. Beanie asked who's doing his own free-to-play journey. Beanie asked me, are the drop rates for champions the same across all difficulty levels? The answer is yes. So the difference between normal, hard, brutal, and nightmare for dropping champions specifically are all going to be the same. It's all the same. So if you're specifically only farming for a champion, let's say you want Saurus, or you really want, where's the Deadlands, or you really want War Maiden, because War Maiden is an excellent decreased defense AoE champion, especially early on. You could just drop down to normal and only spend four energy per run instead of six or eight on Brutal. That way you have a better chance of getting War Maiden at a lower cost. That's just food for thought there. Let's see what else I wanted to recap on. So we're doing this. Okay, and then we, we're going to get our Sacred Shard soon. Upgrade rank. And all of this will come together eventually. Now, somebody else in my Discord, E1, asked me this question about the Guardian Ring. Is it worth it unlocking the rest of this? The answer is kind of. And then you want to add an asterisk on top of that. It costs 350, or it costs 300 gems to unlock a slot. Then it's going to cost 350 to upgrade. And then it's going to go all the way to slot level 3. I think, personally, if you ask me what you should do, and I'll tell you why in a bit, only unlock 3 of them. 3 max. Don't spend the gems on these last two. In my experience, and even in my endgame account, I have run out of champions to throw in here, and I don't even really use them. Sometimes I just leave them empty. The reason being is because when you get to the end game and you start doing clan boss on a regular basis, you use pots for everything, and it's super fast. You end up with thousands of them. And the other thing is you eventually get to a point where you don't have anything to level up. If you're trying to do a champion training event, you end up trying to level up and max out these common champions just because you want the points. Well, what about early game? What about beginners? Again, yeah, I think it's it's still a good investment. Maybe just the, the first three only, though. Because if you really want to level and rank somebody up, you're going to go into campaign, and you're going to farm 12-3. Or whichever is the highest dungeon that you can get to, or highest campaign that you can get to. So that's what I would do, but again, it's your account. You can just do what you want, because it's your account, but that's just my opinion. It's great to passively rank up champions here and there, but you don't end up using it as much as you might think that you do, in my opinion, later on. Here we are in Classic Arena. I'm not going for the Zenogra Fusion on this account. I kind of joined late. There's just no way that I'm going to be able to catch up for the Fragment Fusion. Let's go ahead and do this Ascension mission. Kale. Brought him up. This is done. Upgrade four champions to level 50. I can't just bang out a bunch of pots into him. I kind of have to go into the campaign and level him up by those means. Now, Saurus is not exactly my campaign farmer quite yet, just because he doesn't have the stats... But he will get there, and he will get there soon. It's just a, a gear issue for now. But as you can see, he is starting to get there. He's been pretty handy so far. I'm really happy. A great free-to-play farmer. Six seconds. Do this three times. If you're wondering what stats you should go for for Saurus, 
I have talked about it in a few other videos, but I'll say it here. If I remember correctly what worked for me the last time I built Soros, and granted it's been a while, a minimum of 3.5k attack, more is better by the way, and 103 speed, more is better, but you just need a minimum of 103. That's your starting baseline. 100% crit damage, or 100% crit rate, and then as much crit damage as you can get. The reason I say 103 is because if you go to stage 12, 3, which is where you're going to be farming mostly, Lord Shazar is the fastest champion here. He's going at 101, oh, so 102. Now, you might say, oh, there's a 32% speed, but it's only for arena battles. It doesn't, it doesn't count here in campaign. So you only need to be at at least one over Lord Shazar because he is the fastest champion currently for this exact stage. And it is the same going into Brutal. I can't show you now, but for an example, I'll show you on Normal. Stage 3, Lord Shazar is still going at 101. It's the same across all difficulty levels. So 102 is the minimum. I don't, I'm not saying only give him 102 speed, but I am saying that's the minimum you need. I have to really hit on that. If you can get some cruel gear on him, or if you can farm Fire Knight and you have Savage gear on him, that would be even better to get the extra ignore damage. But I don't have any Savage gear. I mean, I do have Savage gear, but there's only like two pieces in there. You know, three only. But it ignores 25% of enemy defense. Cruel would be excellent to have. Priority stats will be crit damage on the gloves, attack on the chest, attack percent on the boots. Now, why attack percent boots? Because Soros does not need to go too fast. He does not need to go fast at all. You can just stack that into attack. His base attack is at 883. Right now at level 50. It's going to go up a little bit later. But you want him to have as much attack as possible on top of having a lot of crit damage. You do need him crit capped. I don't want you to think that crit damage is all you need. Because if, you're crit, if you have crit damage, but you have no attack, your crit is only going to hit as hard as however much attack you have. If you have low attack and you have a lot of crit damage, you're still going to hit low. But if you have high attack and you have high crit damage, that will only multiply your base attack and you'll do even more damage. That's a lot better. I don't think I articulated it as well as I wanted to, but I, I hope that message gets across to you. Source. Great farmer. Books. You can use other copies of Source. To rank up his skills. He is somebody that you can summon from Mystery Shards. I suggest trying that out. You can actually get blues from Mystery Shards. There is a chance of doing so. So whenever you have shards available and you're looking for new champions or maybe even food, go ahead and try that because you never know you might get a blue. Something might pop out of the blue for you. You're not going to get a legendary or an epic, but it's something. Collect these here. Gems. I've been using all my gems for energy, pretty much, just to get through all of the missions. I think what you can do, what I and I have to bring this up. If you're a newer player, you might want to be aware of this. Masteries can be bought if you have 800 gems. What a lot of people do is they save 800. And I've done this before. I've, I've always done this. You save 800 gems for your first level 60 champion who is probably going to be your campaign farmer. That way you can get the tier 6 masteries that you need. By the way, Saurus, when you get him, if you build Saurus out as a campaign farmer, you're going to want to get Helm Smasher to proc that chance to ignore more damage. So yeah, that's where I'm at so far. And I'm 
trying to see if there's anything else I, I wanted to bring up. Clan boss, I haven't really focused on it, but you need to focus on it. I think you should. Arena, you should be doing arena as well because these stat boosts, uh, these stat boosts that you get from doing arena are huge. If you don't know this, you can go over to where is it? Um, right here, you can check even here in the tier section. Pretty sure it shows up somewhere else. It shows up right here that you get a bonus to HP, attack, and defense for whichever tier of arena that you are in. This applies to all areas of the game across the raid landscape. So make sure you're doing arena as much as possible because you're going to get these natural bonuses that are applied to your champions. On top of that, you can also get some Magisteel from battles and use that to get more gear here. I do recommend Perception to start out with. It's godly. And then you can also put some arena tokens here for stat boosts. Because, for example, you can get accuracy increases all the way up to 80 for all of your magic champions. Or if you wanted crit damage, all of your crit damage champions who are of spirit affinity, when you rank these up, you're going to get more crit damage. Something to work on, something to work towards. As far as the dungeons go, I haven't really been able to farm any of the dungeons quite yet. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. I do think that if you can eventually get to stage 15, that it's going to be the most efficient way to get masteries for your champions. And I've been using Sun Wukong for the most part to farm because he, and this was made to me, made known to me, this was made known to me by Tairagu, a bigger content creator. He pointed out that Sun Wukong is able to, when built correctly with the right stats, solo the Minotaur, stage 15. And that, that was more so efficient than using 800 gems. You're saving about, what, I think it was 300 gems to max out completely with full scrolls on one champion versus paying 800 gems. So that's something to be aware of. That's something I've been doing right now. And now that I'm talking about it, I don't know that me spending the energy to farm these lower stages beats waiting to save up 800 gems and use them for masteries on my one champion Saurus, for an example. There's that. In terms of Ice Golem, haven't really gotten too far. Stage 7, that's about it. Um, Spider, stage 5, that's about it. My goal here is to get the stage 10. Because stage 10 drops... They've got this bug where they drop... In fact, let me go ahead and find that exact picture. Found it. Okay, so, oh wait, no, that's not it, that's uh, something else. Here we go, spider dens loot table and drop rates. Look here, it says code bug missing zero. I don't know what the missing zero is for, but stage 10 of Spider has an 81% chance, 81.8% chance to drop five star gear. And that's been the case for as long as I've been playing Raid. The past five years, that hasn't changed. Five star gear will start dropping at a 12.5% rate at stage seven, 18 on the next level, 23% on the next level, and then jumps all the way to 81.8%. But then it drops down to 40, then 45, and it never goes past 80 again. Even on stage 25, it's only at 68%. It 
the goal for me as a newer player on a new account i'm not a newer player but the goal for me on a new account is to get the stage 10 to farm it in a reasonable time i am not going to be able to farm in 10 seconds or anything like that unless i just summon taurus which is highly unlikely but stage 10 i'm thinking like a minute would be a decent amount of time for me dragon excellent stage to farm stalwart frost gear is situational but it's pretty nice toxic lifesteal great for training wheels by that i mean lifesteal will heal on the damage that you put out you're going to heal your own champion based on the damage that you put out and that's going to be huge that's going to help you stay alive and progress through the game but it's training wheels in the sense that you get used you get accustomed to having that then when you take it off you kind of don't know what to do after that so i refrain as much as possible from using lifesteal gear but sometimes you just have to do it but mainly speed and accuracy but then you have perception gear at a certain point you're gonna want to only use perception gear over accuracy nowadays even on my balls deep main account and i say balls deep into the end game that's what i meant to say because it's five years in i only farm dragon usually when i have to for a fusion or in a 3x event for speed fire knight stuck on stage six but i definitely want to farm here because they have regen and savage and let me tell you once i'm able to farm at least over here stage at least if i can get the stage seven and start dropping five star gear it's gonna be a game changer because that is my access into getting the better gear that i need that i really need because i hate right now investing in four star gear as you noticed i don't have too many pieces of gear that are at 16. One, because I don't have the silver for it. And two, because I don't want to invest in four-star gear. Because I know it's going to be quickly overshadowed by the five-star gear and the six-star gear that I will eventually get. But the five-star gear, which is right around the corner. Wukong has a piece of 16. A piece at 16. That's a five-star, though. This is a speed boot. It is lifesteal. It completed the set. I did need attack on him, so I did bring these up. On top of that, these were for the mission. But if I could go back, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't. I'm going to get rid of these as soon as possible once I have a replacement for them. Hopefully, it's Savage because I want to build him like a nuker. Need some Savage gear for Rathalos so he can really smack. I need an HP burner to make him really do some damage. I know Ghoulish Ranger does HP burns, but no, he doesn't do HP burns. It's somebody who looks like him. That's not Ghoulish Ranger. That's hollow. Never mind. Some regen gear would be pretty nice. I don't have a... Mm, yeah, no, I don't have any champions who can solo any dungeons using regen gear quite yet. But definitely I'm looking out for Savage and regen gear from fire knight the biggest thing for me is getting through the stages ascending now when i see you guys in the next video i will be doing a collab video talking about what is it? talking about feeling stuck in raid and i'm gonna bring on beanie probably vergi Gavin, if he's around, we're going to talk about what a lot of players are feeling, the sentiment coming into Raid, about how they feel being stuck, wandering, not knowing what to do next. Because there's a lot to be said about it, and if you are interested, make sure to stay in touch, and I'll see you on that video next. Peace.